Hey Beer Geeks and welcome to the Appalachian fucking trail. I don't know how we've ended up here, Johnny. Well, well I did. We drove. We walked up that path <laughs> up there, but uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. Lots of gorgeous colours, red and yellow against the sky. Uh, and we're going to be doing another hype trail out here in the sticks, all about new trail. Hype trail? I like hype it. Hype trail. Did I say hype trail? I think you did. Well, I meant that. Um, so when we came out to Pennsylvania, we've done some videos here already, we were told by many, many people about this mythical new brewery called New Trail, who have sort of come out of nowhere and appeared absolutely everywhere. Mm. So I made Brad drive two and a half hours out of my way to go visit this brewery. Um, now it's founded by three guys, one of whom was at Tired Hands and Kane, both of whom make you know great IPAs, but also uh, Tired Hands, they make incredible saisons and other styles. Um, so I was really excited to visit them. So we had a little chat with Mike when we got there, he gave us a little tour, so we're gonna cut to that, and then we're gonna dig into four of his very varied and very delicious beers. Hey guys, we are down at New Trail in Williamsport, Williamsport. Pennsylvania, and we're here with Mike. Hi. Uh, and obviously Brad. Hi. Hi. Uh, and we're going to give you a quick tour of New Trail, uh, a brewery that we didn't know about before we started researching this and before some people said you need to go see New Trail. Um, so Mike, uh, as we wander in, tell me a little bit about the, the start of New Trail. Sure. So New Trail started in April of 2018. Uh, we started with a very traditional model of producing a Pilsner, an Amber Ale, a White Ale, uh, an American IPA, a Hazy IPA, and then as we developed in the market, we decided to move forward and sort of move into rotating hazy IPAs and dark beers and lagers, really whatever we want to produce. So you kind of did the evolution of American brewing all, in a couple of months. All in four months. <laughs> yeah. 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 Starting out with those styles and moving into hazy IPAs yeah, and all that kind of stuff. So you've been open 18 months? 18 months, yeah. Last year in 2017, we produced roughly 2,000 barrels, and then this year we're aiming to produce somewhere between seven and eight. Right. So, so yeah. to anyone, anyone who's ever opened a brewery or knows about breweries, 18 months, <laughs> and now look at it. You guys have come a long way. Yeah, it's been, it's been quite, a, quite an expedition. Yeah. So we, uh, we originally started with cellar capacity of about 3,000 barrels, and then almost a year to date, we put in four 60 barrel fermenters, which ex just made our capacity about 300% larger. Yeah. So, and we're at capacity now. We're going to produce 8,000 this year. And and is most of what you're producing a hazy IPA? Primarily. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we our our flagship, which is sort of a naughty word anymore. Uh, Broken Heels. Yeah, you can't have a flagship. Everything's yeah, got to right. be different all yeah, the time, right, always. All the time, always. So, <laughs> uh, Broken Heels comprises probably about 50% of our production right, right. now. Right. Wow. So. Okay. Can we talk about the building? I mean, it's, sure. it's really beautiful and the area has got a bit of a history, hasn't it? So. Yeah, so Williamsport's known uh, originally for the lumber industry. Um, it was at one point, the it held the most millionaires per capita in the world. Um, that's no longer the case. That's coming back now that you guys are getting big, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it could be. I hope so. Um, but this building itself used to be the Dodge Planing Company. So uh, there was there's a river which is right on the other side of this wall right here. The logs were floated off into a pond right on the other side, and then they were planed right here where we're standing. Right. So. And and you've you not wood from that company, but there's lots of reclaimed wood and that kind of stuff yeah, going on area, out here. The area is very well known for its reclaimed wood. There's lots of fucking forest. Live, live edge. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful bar you guys have put together, um, and we've been tasting some beers for a couple of hours now. Brad's driving, so when I say we, I mean I. Yeah, I've been we, tasting some. We. Well, we have, yeah, we yeah, have. Yeah. And, and Brad's been, Brad's been looking for lawn. Pretending I'm drinking. Yeah. If you want to hold the mic and I can have that, that'd it be great. It smells delicious. I must say. <laughs> There's a lot of balance, I think, on that list, both in terms of what you brew it's, and how you brew it. It's one of the most balanced lists I've had in a little while. Um, <laughs> it's usually it's, falling off the end in some way, is it? Uh, yeah. There's generally like three or four IPAs on typically, right. uh, but it's really nice to have a, a, a balance right now. To yeah. be able to pour a Belgian triple, an Imperial Stout, two lagers, yeah. three lagers, I guess, with the, the Baltic Porter, which is fun for me. Yeah. It's got a lovely autumn feel, like blackberries in your sour, yeah. Baltic Porters, triples, ambers. These are the kind of beers that you want to drink when the colors are turning and it's getting a little bit colder outside. So that was an exciting tour. Yep. What, a, what a great place that was, man. A beautiful place. What are we going to start with? We're going to start with a beer called Decidious. Decidious. So, um, a type of tree? Or, yeah, Decidious tree is yeah. um, 
the opposite of the evergreens, I think. Yeah, so it's changes exactly what's around it's where the colours change and it drops off, I oh, believe. Yeah. So what is deciduous? A golden lager? It's a golden lager. So he won uh, a GABF medal this year for his Pilsner. This isn't it, this is another one. But to show good heritage. Uh, these are our perfect beer geek cups. We don't necessarily recommend using them unless you're in a park, in which case they're much safer than bringing glass. So a golden lager, I'm hoping, is going to have a little bit more malt character, maybe a little bit more bready, kind of the premium Hellas, like um, Augustina, the gold and black yeah. label, not yeah. the green one. Yeah, and it smells like that. Smells lovely. Really grassy. Sure, that's not the really grass. Really bready. <laughs> Could be the grass. Yeah, it's 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 grassy and lemony and briochey. That's what I get. Yeah, it's certainly a, to a toasted a sweet, herby brioche. Sweet bread. Yeah, for sure. And a bit of honey as well. Loads of body on that, yeah. and loads of bitterness too. Yeah, it surprised me. Yeah, that is. Um, that's not what I expected from the aroma. It's got a, like a noble hop aroma, but it's got a big, bold kick at the finish from yeah. the hops. It seems to come out of nowhere, the bitterness. It's yeah. just whammy. But it's really good. It's really bittersweet, so that brioche thing is just wiped away by the big, grassy boldness of the hops. Danger. Yeah, but I'd assume that's pretty big, 5.5 to 6-ish. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a big boy. Yeah. I mean, uh, for us, we'd, we'd probably suffer to session too much of that. Mm. But uh, out here, they kind of do things bigger. They do like the bigger ABVs, yeah. So that's probably designed for his market. Mm. Right, next up, we've got an amber ale, which uh, as he gave us this can, he said, people don't really rate it, but he loves it. So we were like, well, we've got to try that. It's a good start. If, if the brewer loves it, then it's a representation of what he's trying to achieve. So let's give this one a go. Cheers, mate. Lovely color. It is good. Amber. Who'd have thunk it? Lovely amber colour there. This is the most peaceful I've felt doing a uh, <laughs> sofa session ever. Yeah, it is really absolutely gorgeous. Although there is always the risk that a ranger's going to find us because drinking in state parks is technically not legal. Or a serial killer. Or a serial killer could find us and he could bury us exactly here. It'd be the perfect crime. <laughs> uh, right, this amber ale. Caramel. Yeah, loads of caramel. I've Smells really clean. A taste. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> It is clean. After drinking the last one. Yeah, you, I thought uh, we'd start with the golden lager because I thought it would be the cleanest, the lightest. No, this amber ale, well, you can see why as a brewer you love it. As a brewer, your palate's always tired, you're thirsting for something clean and easy drinking at the end of a shift because you're hot and you're sweaty. Yeah, I can see why he loves this. Yeah. Really clean, little hint of caramel. Again, lots of bitterness. Hmm. So, I mean, they're known for their hazy IPAs, this brewery, but they actually seem to love bitterness. They're just bittering everything. Mm. Not nowhere near as bitter as the last one for me, but it's it's certainly much bitter than I expect. Much nicer. There's a little yeast character there as well, just a tiny hint of banana or something. A bit of funk. Moving on up, I reckon let's cleanse our palate with his tart ale. Ooh. Uh, so this is called heliocentric tart ale, brewed with pomegranate and passion right. fruit. We had another heliocentric, so that's his range of sours, and it's really light on the sourness, which he does on purpose because he wants it to be really approachable. Yeah, he wasn't super into the sours, was he? No, I don't think so. I think he, he doesn't want too much lactic character. He wants the other cool stuff to come through, like in this case, the passion fruit yeah. uh, and, and uh, the pomegranate. Yeah, he didn't even call them sours. No, he calls tart. them tart. Just tarts. Yeah, so most, most beers, sour beers will be around 3.2, maybe even lower for the really, really sour stuff. And he's, he's keeping it up nearish for, mm -hmm. so, you know, 30% less sour. Wow, so much fruit. It's big, isn't it? Initially, I get loads and loads of pomegranate and then it's all passion fruit. It's nicely layered. Yeah, it's quite, oh, it's got a nose. It's, uh, it's quite exotic. Very exotic. It's, it's, uh, it's got a Middle Eastern-y sort of, uh, I guess that's the pomegranate. Yeah, yeah. That's gorgeous. It's good. Wow. It's quite, um, doesn't feel huge, this one. No, it's very easy going. It's really quaffable. I could drink a lot of this. If you, if you said that wasn't even tart, I don't think you'd blink an, blink an eye, really. It's really restrained on the sourness. Yeah. Just a little bit of tartness, a little bit more tartness, maybe from the passion fruit. The pomegranate just bursts. You know when you bite a seed? Mm. It's almost like that. It goes into your mouth and then, like this little explosion of juiciness. Yeah, that's gorgeous. 
these guys are known for their IPAs, but he didn't really talk that much about his IPAs. Um, I think he was really keen to stress that they do other stuff. Pretty hazy, bro. It does. And I can smell it from here. The wind just camera? caught it. Where are those pine trees at? So that's got, from what we learned at Tro, because I reckon that's got some Simcoe in. I'm getting a little bit of creme caramel. Yeah, and a light top citrus note, and then all stone fruit. Not hugely citric. Not like not overripe fruit or stuff like that. It's a little bit sweeter, a little bit more muted, a little bit danker. Mm. Much lighter than most New England IPAs on the body. Yeah. And <clears throat> yeah, it's not. I mean, they're not massively bitter anyway. But that's not very bitter at all. No, all <laughs> the other beers have been much more bitter. So his IPA is his least bitter beer, that's which cool. is the way that IPAs have gone, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, lovely. I wouldn't describe that as juicy. I'd describe that as as um, bittersweet and and um, caramelised. Like, not in an oxidation kind of way. No. But in a light, zippy, candied lemon kind of kind of way. That's really nice. It's interesting when you get a, when we do a hype train or a hype trail and all the beers are delicious but not beers that blow your face off. Yeah. I feel like that those are the ones we should really be rating highly and enjoying because they're so drinkable and they've got kind of staying power. You don't just drink a teco of it and then move on to the next thing. You're like, I quite like sure. that again. So I can see why these are selling really well because they're hitting the beer geeks and people the beer geeks are like cool. And also anyone that walks into that tap room and has this beer or that tart beer. Yeah. You know, that's gonna those two beers could appeal to everyone. My next question, Johnny. Yeah. Uh, which one would you have a teku full of? I, I'd have a pint full of that tartel. Me too. I really would. That's Me my too. favourite of the three. Yeah. Four. Oh, God. Yeah, so mad impressed with those beers. Really excited by how sessionable and drinkable they are. And I think New Trail will go quite a long way. He said they were growing extremely fast. Maybe faster than he expected. But he's, he's got yeah. it all under control. He's doing a great job. was kind of insane, really. Mm. And that, I think that that's a testament to how hard that guy works. <laughs> yeah, and, he was. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, and the beer is. He was busy. Is not uh, suffering in any way. It's. No, well, we don't know what uh, it was before. Maybe it was yeah, the best yeah. beer ever made, but the beers are stunning. It's great beer. And a cool place as well. Beer. If you ever find you know, yourself out that way, you try. Worth, worth a two and a half hour detour? Uh, worth a two and a half hour detour. <laughs> that's a five hour round trip. <laughs> <laughs> that's